of Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakaq Kodash. Double honors to the elders of GM, Master Ruel. Peace and salutations to Lake Akim on the four corners, pushing the truth for sincerity. Peace be unto you, Shalom. There's a video, uh, just, just a watch about a woman uh, on uh, Instagram basically saying how the draft is coming back, which is uh, no surprise because uh, you're going to need uh, people to join this war. And uh, there was this uh, guy, they are basically having a, a meeting, basically, and he was uh, stating, why should we have uh, pay for the uh, sins of our basically of our forefathers or why should we have to suffer you know we didn't do that and, and, and actually yeah you did you know the scripture teaches, teaches about uh reincarnation this is uh ecclesi one second uh Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 1 it says I'll start with verse no I'll start with verse 1 the words of the preacher the son it's rolling again uh, verse 3 says what profit hath the man of all his labor which he taketh <coughs> under the sun one generation passeth away and another generation cometh but the earth abideth forever so one generation comes, another generation goes, and but the earth is still here. But the same generation that came before is the same generation that's coming back. You have the same spirits that's coming back, you know, in reincarnation. So this, and uh, also, the scripture talks about those that perish the hour shot. So see it. How how are those that uh uh? Let me let me grab that real quick in Revelations. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 7 it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. Now we know those same people that perished him did not live beyond, you know, uh, 120 years. They They died. So how are they going to see him? They're going to come back because there's reincarnation. So that concept of we didn't do it. Yeah, you did. You benefited from it. You know, every time you go into these uh, neighborhoods, you know, it's it's the elite that are basically uh, in the lower level elite that are gentrifying it. But who benefits of the gentrification? It's these super low level uh, Edomites so they're the ones that benefit from the uh, gentrification and the other guy he basically was arguing that uh, same thing like yeah you, you still benefit faced, uh, basically from slavery and because of this this is why Mosai is going to end up judging all these nations and you're going to have all these uh, wars going on because it's ultimately to usher in, help usher in the kingdom. Yeah, these other nations, they got their reason why they're going to war. Oh, you got uh, WMDs or you got oil and stuff like that. But the real, the real, when you get down to the really nitty gritty of it, the most is gathering all these nations to uh, fight against each other. So basically we can be avenged and we can basically get this uh, kingdom because... All these uh, little skirmishes and stuff like that that's going on is all all roads lead to us getting the kingdom back, and all it helps to, uh, to get it usher in. 
So this draft that's going to be coming, you know, women are going to be involved in it. You know, they're, they're not going to uh, be discriminating against who can and uh, cannot join. Good. Another uh, part of the topic that they were discussing was um, uh, reparations, you know, which um, we don't we don't want reparations. You had a, a Edomite basically arguing uh, why should Edomites, you know, have to pay reparations you know, for crimes that they didn't commit, you know, that basically they weren't alive when their forefathers committed it, you know, and as the Ox said earlier, you are your forefathers coming back in the reincarnation. You are them. And that's the reason why the scripture says within, um, in Salaki, bear with me, Baba Kasha, as I pull it up. It says that basically you'll be punished until the third and fourth generation. And why, why is that? This is the book of Exodus, uh, the 34th chapter, verse 7. It says, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins. And that will no, uh, by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and fourth generation. So you are your forefathers coming back, all right? You come back every third and fourth generation. You're the same people, all right? But however, the sin that you committed against the nation of Israel is, is a sin and an act that cannot be acquitted and forgiven. All right, and you will be punished for it. And not only did you take our people in slavery, well, one, let's start with what you did with Gad, you know, Reuben, all right, and the rest of the 10 tribes of, of the nation of Israel. All right, not only did you murder and massacre them and enslave them first, but you took their lands. All right, and you benefit from the fruit of their lands. All right, and then you took their, bro their brethren of the southern kingdom uh, Judah being the head tribe, Benjamin and Levi. And you had them work in your fields. All right, first of all, you sold them. You benefited in that way. All right, they were com uh, commerce, part of the commerce, the things that were traded here within America. And then you took them and you made them uh, work by force in your fields. All right, without any payment, all right, uh, uh, without any rest. So you have benefited. All of these major corporations, all right, uh, and businesses had their root and their upstart in, in, in slavery. All right, all of these insurance companies, these loan companies, these banks, all right, that are, that are becoming insolvent and collapsing, well, they got their startup, all right, within slavery. All right, even... All right, within the, the New York Stock Exchange. All right, the first major uh, uh, commodity, you know, or thing that was sold was what? It was slaves, okay? So therefore, you have benefited so much, you know, so much. But then, if you want to put a price on it, all right, really, it's insurmountable. All right, because the life of an Israelite is more valuable than any amount of money. All right, but however, you got wealthy and rich. So you got Jake's looking at the money and they're thinking, okay, well, look, we want a piece of the pie. We don't want a piece of your fucking pie. We want the whole pie to be burnt and then we want the residue of you to become our, you know, servants. And it says that within the scriptures. All right, we want the nation of Israel to be restored, all right, back to its glory, back to its former state. And in order for that to happen, all right, this place has to be destroyed. Esau Edom has to be taken down. All right, uh, um, a great war's war had to be fought. Yahweh Shai will come down 
and he will put all of the nations in order all right through through judgment and great war and then he'll set up the kingdom unto the nation of israel and we'll be restored back to our glory we'll be restored back better than it, it, it we were before all right we fell This is Luke chapter uh, 17 and verse, I'll start a verse, I'll start a verse. But which of you having a servant plowing and feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he is come from the field go and sit down to meet and will not rather say unto him make ready whether I may sup and gird thyself and serve me that I will have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doeth he thank that servant because he did things that were commanded him? I throw, throw not. So likewise ye, when ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty to do. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through uh, the, the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered to the certain village, there met him uh, ten that were lepers. Actually, I went a little too far because I'm going to have to skip over again. But... Uh, Basically, once you uh, serve the Most High, you have a little bit of uh, protection. What's going to happen is these people who basically are, you know, not serving the Most High. When this draft does happen, you know, you know the the uh, the, the elect are going to be able to escape. They're not going to be, you know, because if you go into this draft, they're going to want to chip you. They're already uh, chipping. Uh, uh, soldiers, you have, you have uh, testimonies from brothers at camps where people from military come in and saying, "Yeah, I got I got uh, MOTB in my tongue, I got MOTB in my uh, uh, knees and stuff like that." So you're gonna have, you know, when this draft comes, you know, you're gonna have people that's gonna actually just go and do it. But the elect, you know, because they're Serving the Heavenly Father, they're not actually following the uh, image of this beast and worshiping this image. They're not going to, because you're going to be going to fight for, you know, Esau to actually fight Yahweh Shai if you join this draft that's coming up. So a servant doing what he wants supposed supposed to do is you know stand put, you know, prophesy and do as he commanded. You know, now when this draft does come up, you're going to have. Uh, just like I think, uh, what was it, Vietnam? When the draft happened, you I think you had an ultimatum of I think like five years in prison or something, or or uh, so I, you had to serve in Vietnam, and you might just get killed for not uh, serving in uh, in this war. Skipping down to seventeen and and thirteen, what is it? He shall seek to save save his life. That is verse 33. Luke 17 and 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And then you're going to have people who are going to be making decisions, trying to seek to save their lives. You know, this here uh, they're faced with a, with a draft. They're trying to seek to save their lives. And they, oh, I, well, I, I might I might die if 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 uh, if I don't go, or I might go to prison. They might kill me. So let me, you know, you know, just comply with the government. What well, says whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So you put, putting your life on the line, hazarding your line, make your life, your body, your living sacrifice. And basically making your, you know, and actually not following after this beast. Romans, uh, 
13. This is Romans 13. In verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. You're going to have people that's actually going to be reading scriptures like this and twisted and saying, yeah, you got to follow what the government says. This goes to a certain point when you have to choose. The scripture says, basically, you can't serve two masters. When you are put in a situation where you're told to do something contrary to the scriptures, you got to actually go back to what, you know, Yahweh Shai said. And now, all of these uh, reparations that's going on, we not seeking for Esau to give us reparations. I mean, he he can't. Like the brother said, it's, it's they, they can't calculate it. Our reparations is, is coming through slavery. That's that's the reparations that I want. I want, I want reparations. I want slaves. Sevenfold. Those are the type of reparations we got. We got uh, uh, a thousand years to basically use them as slaves. And even afterwards, they're still going to be our servants. I mean, but they'll just get our, their lands back. I think there's a, a scripture that mentions. Let's see if I can find it. You got anything else? Uh, that you are another scripture? Uh, let me see if I can find something. Uh, but Revelations 13, real quick, and 9. All right, I, I got the, uh, actually it's two scriptures. You got it already? Yeah, it's uh, okay. the book of Job 20 and 18. It says, that which he labored for shall, be, shall he restore and shall not swallow it down according to his substance shall his restitution be and he shall not rejoice therein so you're getting ready to give everything up you know by your your violence you know by your great power you know of that sword that the heavenly father bless you with you know um you have basically subjugated you know the people of the world you've taken their land you've taken you know everything that was theirs. You know you um, done into the world the same thing that you've done unto the children of Israel. But however, the children of Israel is the apple of the heavenly Father's eye. That's what makes it so much the worse. But through your sword, according to the blessing that was given unto you by our forefather Isaac, all right, which is Yahweh Shai, you know, in the reincarnation. You know, it was said that you were going to do that. Now, if your substance is the whole world and you have gathered all of the world's resources, you know, and all of the people, then what are you going to restore? What are you going to give back? You're going to give back all of those things. But who are you giving it back unto? The rightful people that it belongs to. See, all of the earth, you know, and the kingdoms and the nations and languages, you know, and the dominions. They really belong to Yahweh Shai. All right? They belong to Yahweh Shai first, but then unto the children of Israel also. So you're going to make a restitution of all of the things that you possess, but however, you're not just going to give it up easily. They're not they're not just going to relinquish their their kingdom and give it unto Yahweh Shai and the Israelites. So the, it's going to have to be a fight, and the heavenly Father wants that fight. So that he can send forth his son, Yahweh Shai, which will show great might and great power, all right, and great majesty, all right, and subjugating and taking these people down so that the fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai can be magnified in the earth, all right? The other scripture is the book of Acts, the third chapter, verse 21. It says, whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things which the Most High have spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets, all right, since the world began. So once more, the restitution of all things isn't going to come just by, by Esau, Edom, and the rest of these nations totally just giving up everything that they possess. 
But beginning with the Rothschilds, the rich elite banking families of the world, which is, there's more than just the Rothschilds, you know, they go by other names as well. But however, they hold the stock of the earth. They hold the, the, uh, the dew of the earth. All right. And they're living fat. All right. They're living good. All right. They're living in places that, that the majority of the world haven't even seen. All right. They're living in, in, in palaces. All right. In, in bedrooms and rooms that, that got dust on it because ain't nobody been in there in a while. All right. They're living fat. You know, they're living large. But however, they've accumulated the world's wealth. You know, they have uh, gathered the people into themselves. They're in control. So what's going to happen is they're going to have to restore that. But the way that it's going to happen, all right, there will be a great world's war. It will be. People are going to be drafted. A lot of people are going to lose their lives. There's going to be a lot of casualties. All right, it's going to be a lot of fighting with missiles. All right, exploding, fire, all right, debris, tanks, all right, uh, military helicopters, all right, war planes, all right, armies, you know, with generals and commanders and foot soldiers, all right, being blown to pieces and destroyed. And then our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, is going to intervene, and these nations are going to uh, be able to, after killing and destroying each other, put aside their differences. All right, to try to fight our Lord. But once that happens, when they begin to fight our Lord, whose, whose name is Yahweh Shai, he's going to destroy them. As well as all of the people that have been drafted, all right, within, you know, this great war's war. All right, all of them are going to get destroyed. And at that time, that's when the kingdom is going to be restored into the nation of Israel. All right, the, the elect of the nation of Israel will be taken into heaven. All right, uh, um, with Yahweh Shai, and they're going to return as it states within the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. All right, I've seen the new kingdom, new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. This is uh, Exodus chapter 10 and verse 1. It says, Yahweh said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And now, modern day Pharaoh is Esau. His heart is being hardened. He's basically putting more of a, a tight squeeze. But the thing is that most of wanted a, a, a grand finish. You know, he didn't want to just, you know, Pharaoh just said, okay, all right, you can have it, you can have it, you can have your land, you can have this. No, it was, they, they was basically, they ran out after us. They had that sense of entitlement. And Esau has the same sense of entitlement. He ain't about to let us go. He's not about to just give us reparation to just get the king like, okay, here you have a shot. Here you have a kingdom. No, he's, his heart has been hardened. Uh, from the top again, it says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And that thou mayest tell in the ears of my son and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done amongst them. That ye may know that I am Yahweh. And that's another thing. How many, uh, uh, what's that, Jeremiah, I think 31 or 30. But the days, basically, we won't have to teach each other no more to know how we know the laws because you it's gonna be in you you're right at this moment it's not but you're gonna see so much of deliverance you're gonna know that there is a power that's visiting this earth and you're gonna know in that day who are the elect you're gonna know like damn like those guys like they, they got salvation not us you're gonna have some some stubborn people that's gonna be stubborn and you know all the way until they see the missiles come but you're gonna have a lot of people that's gonna realize the scripture says in the day of thy power that people shall be willing they're gonna be like okay all right most high is is behind this just like how you had when the, uh the uh, pandemic happened you had bibles that you couldn't keep a bible in the store it was just flying off shelves 
because everybody understood that, oh, this is the most high. It wasn't the Quran that was just selling like crazy. It wasn't the Book of the Dead, the Kiber Negas, or uh, uh, the Book of Vedas, uh, the, 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 what, the, something like the Circle Seven or the Holy Seven, I think, whatever the uh, Morris dudes read, whatever their holy books is, or whatever ancient Chinese texts. Because why? They ain't, they ain't nothing. They weren't. That has nothing to do with what's going on. They they know that like uh, the some cobblestone ain't causing all this. It's prophesied already. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which you read about in the good book, which is the scriptures. Reading on, it says, and Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, God of Hebrews, How long? Will thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. So the most I still had them basically do it anyways. You know, I'm a in his heart, but I still want you to go in and basically say it to him. Uh, else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into thy coast and they shall cover the face of earth that one cannot be able to see the earth and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped and remaineth unto you from the hail and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field now I'm not going to read all of it but you read about the plagues of Egypt and you hear it read about the vials that are being poured out in Revelation that are poured out in the seat of the beast of the kingdom. You see all these plagues that are happening to this place. You see the uh, worm being spread underneath, and you basically seeing, you know, chariots, sightings, but you're seeing a lot more stuff. So you're seeing more plagues that are uh, basically happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, the Heavenly Father wanted to judge Egypt, you know, so he allowed them to be brought, you know, bring his people into slavery, you know, so that he could eventually do that. You know, he hardened Pharaoh's heart, you know, to not let his people go the same way that he's doing it to Esau Edom, because he wants to judge them and bring them down. Now, what Esau is trying to do, Esau is trying to fight to keep, you know, all of the things that he has. He's fighting to keep this world, you know, and what he wants to do is establish his new world order. All right. So everything that Esau Edom is doing right now, he's doing because he's trying to keep, you know, this kingdom. But however, he's going to lose it. All right. He's going to lose it. That's all I got. All right, and I know, hope this has been edifying. And on that note, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash, the Balance, the Elders of GM, I do well. Peace, are you tasting the like? Akim on the four corners, pushing the truth for sincerity. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Shalom.